what if um, I am an owner of a large and complex infrastructure? Uh, so how exactly? I know we have already discussed a lot of things. Maybe this this answer would be a pointer thing, but I have a large and complex infrastructure. So what should be the steps I would be implementing to make sure I have a high operating? I should not be having a high operating cost on that. I know that there would be always an ROI in the discussion, but let's keep it a technical discussion on that. How I make sure that what I'm, what I do, need to have in the infrastructure, what do I don't know. I think uh, number one, uh, let's start from the beginning, like we started. Proper requirements being gathered, proper capacity planning being done, proper monitoring tools being assigned from the start of the project, cloud. And even before uh, the requirement gathering, cloud conscious culture being implemented, right? So everybody knows what, uh, why we're doing what we're doing, right? And then if you uh, deep dive into, you know, say data, you need to add uh, have proper capacity planning, sizing uh, regarding the data. You have to have the proper uh, auto scaling. Out of scaling. You have to have the proper um, resources allocated for the. Uh, you know, uh, say uh, data pipelines and stuff you need to have good development optimization skills so, uh, to make sure that, you know, each data pipeline is as optimized as it is because, you know, like you would have seen as well, uh, bad development can also lead to uh, growing costs at some point. And, uh, you know, um, uh, Exactly, and then uh, you know to round it all off uh, because as we've uh, uh, talked about all the points, I think we need to have good monitoring and observability, and then again make sure that everything is automated and we have uh, we make good use of all the tools and technologies and auto scaling and everything that cloud provides us. I think I would agree with, with all the points you have mentioned. You <laughs> left very few points that I can just add up on that. Uh, maybe just uh, one of those would be, I need to make sure uh, this is a continuous step, not just one time effort. It should be like monitor, repeat. And <laughs> and evolving, to, evolving. Evolve, exactly. And you need to make sure you're, you, you keep yourself updated with the cloud offerings that are out there. It's always helping you as a customer to save cost and deliver more. So these kind of uh, operators like if I say GCP, if I say Azure, AWS, they are all working for your, obviously they, they are making fortune out of it as well, yeah. but they are helping you to have the most stable infrastructure out there, most stable application out there. So we need to like keep ourselves updated with their offerings and make sure we implement those into our infrastructure to save more and more cost. So I think that would be some pointers that maybe I can add up. I, I think looking at it from a, a overall business unit kind of a, an approach, uh, it also depends on how you have, uh, you know, uh, what what uh, costing models that you're using inside your own company. Like uh, there's always this uh, limited cost monitoring where where everybody there is only certain number chunk of people or one team which is actually responsible for uh, looking after the monitoring of your cloud infrastructure and everything like that and then there are other approaches as well uh, in which um, there can actually everybody has the insight into what the cost is happening so that's more of a, a proactive approach where every you know employee of the company feels responsible and knows what's happening towards the cost side with whatever i'm doing and then there are also uh, the, the charge, the famous chargeback model, in which actually um, your your IT team uh, kind of serves other business units, the cloud infrastructure as as like a, as, as as a customer. You know, they treat other business unit and they kind of like you know the, the costing is happening in in that approach. So it it also um, I mean you you can't really directly jump back to the uh, chargeback approach itself, but of course um, starting from the uh, based on your company size and all that. Uh, it always starts from a limited monitoring approach and then you start as as your company grows you kind of like start changing your approach to based on um, however you're able to control things and however you're able to have full visibility into things so there's that aspect to it as well other than of course the technical stuff that we talked about so th there are multiple layers of how this can be done and of course um, 
doing it at every layer is again it comes back to the same thing that we talked about in the first thing which was the cost conscious culture actually so you have to understand all the layers where the cost optimizations can be you know, happening and you know you just implement them i really like the 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 term you use over here charge back and show back obviously that that can create the ownership culture and yes. as we said we need to highlight the winnings on that who yes. who so th- these kind of methodology I mean, always they, they may not be that easy to implement yeah. like charge back is pretty difficult it would be the right implement. direction at but, least but but for bigger corporates yes that is the go to mechanism but then again um show back can be a better approach if if you if you're like a more uh, closely knit team and you know you do understand every every employee is doing their due diligence